Alec Drape, the bank's former manager, Franklin, finally exposes the truth about the bank's case. Mr. Franklin Amudo, who is the former manager of music star Dakwe Oye Banjo, popularly known as the bank, has released a statement concerning the ongoing rape allegation involving the bank's administrator Babatayo. In the interview by Goldmine TV, titled My Truth According to What I Know, Mr. Amudo gave his own account of what he claimed transpired at the hotel, explaining that he was the one that invited Shaitan Babataya to the party. Franklin Amudo said the party was an all white event at a hotel that took place on December 30, 2018. Franklin Amudo said Shaitan has sat down at the same table with him and few of the band's friends, including one Adia Mohammed and Oinda. According to Amudo, the band performed at the event and never sat with them at the table. Amudo said Shaitan informed him after the event that it was too late for her to go home, so he gave her the key to his room at Glee Hotel, where he lodged as he would not be sleeping there. Franklin Amudo said the band had a room at the venue of the event, Echo Hotel, and was not lodged at Glee Hotel. Franklin said Shaitan had called him later when he had already arrived at Crab to tell him that the band somehow found his way to, into the room and raped her. Amudo said he was shocked that Shaitan's claim because the band did not know his room number and was not lodged at the hotel. Amudo said he immediately called Adjia Mohamed and informed him of the allegation Shaitan made. Frankly said Adjia told him not to worry about it. He had given Shaitan $100 to clean up and get drugs. Frankly said he was unable to ask the band at the time because it was the same period the singer lost his son and he felt it to be insensitive for him to bring such and also the band's wife was also around. My name is Franklin Amudo. I'm a talent manager and also an event creator. I have over 15 to 20 years experience in this business within this industry and globally. Okay, at what point in that 15 to 20 years did you start working with DB Records, DK Media, the branch? Okay, I have to have, I actually have two stints with the band in case nobody knows. Let me put it straight. I was the one that did the band's first album launch in this country in 2004, 2005, there about at White House. I worked in conjunction with Bankuli from IOB 40, then I was the local resource for that project. It was a very short thing because I had a, a, a day to day, a day to, a 95 job that I was doing then, so I was just supporting from my own end. That was the first thing, and that was the first contact that I had with the bunch. Then I started working with the bunch as manager and the GM of DKM in 2016 and I resigned on January 2019. Okay, what was the working relationship like during that time? We had, we had a perfect, we had, we had the next perfect relationship. He has his um, exigencies and it was something that I could work with. We had, we had a very, pretty much good relationship. Okay, so what? Why did you end the relationship? Or who ended it and why did it end? I resigned. I have the letter somewhere there. I resigned. And I resigned based on the um, reason that I just wanted to start my own thing. I felt it was something that I needed to do. That was why I resigned. And when I sent him my resignation letter, he, he accepted it willingly and told me that based on the fact that we need to keep our relationship cordial, that I should just keep it close to me and not make it public, yes. And then since you resigned, how has it been? How has the journey been? Yeah, um, since I resigned, how has the journey been as, a, as an entrepreneur or my relationship with the bank? No, as an entrepreneur. As an entrepreneur, it's been challenging, you know, but when you've invested so much time in the industry, you have human currency that you could call on when you needed it. It has been not too bad. There's been learning curves, there's been pitfalls, there's been highs, there's been lows. I mean, so far, so good. I'm, I'm, I'm still in it. Now, um, the reason why we're having this interview on the third of the third of June, 2020, okay. uh, there was a revelation of sorts in the media that something had happened in December 2018 involving someone that you knew and someone you were working with. Okay. Ivan. So, can you tell us? We want to go back to that date in December 2018. Now, first and foremost, let's even talk about uh, Shane Tomorrow and how you know her. Because 
according to the story that we've heard, is that you invited her to the all white party. There's no lie in that. Okay, so how, let's, tell us about the history before then. How much you know her? How you got okay, to Okay, basically. I met, um, I got introduced to Shaito through a WhatsApp group from a mutual friend called Elizabeth Awudu. We got talking, we had chats a couple of times. She was school, she schools in Kotonu. So sometime last year in 2018, in 2018, we had a show in Kotonu at the Homeboys Lounge. It was a show pioneered by Braille Entertainment, it's a Cyprus based producer. We had a show there. Shaitan called me up. He chatted me and said, ah, I heard you in my city. I said, yes. He said, where are you? I said, so, so, please, so, so, please. She came to the hotel with a friend and said she wanted to go for the show. I said, no problem. You can tag along. There are so many other people that also called and they tagged along. We went for the show. We came back. They waited till morning and they left. Uh, that was my first physical con meeting with Shaitan. That was the first time I saw him in my life. Sorry to cut this, but it wasn't the same event that we went to. In Kotonu? Yes. Were you in Kotonu? I was in Kotonu. Yes, it was, it was a nice event. Wow. wow. Okay, so um, you said she waited overnight that night. Yeah. She, she waited. We, we were drinking, we had a hangout, we had conversations about. She, she came to my room. With a friend, there my band boys were there. You know, everybody was there till morning, and she left. Okay, now let's move forward to the issue that happened in 2018 December. Um, can you tell us from your perspective? Okay. Okay. Ba basically, she um, she she buzzed me up to say she was in Lagos. That what's up? It's December. This that that that. I said yeah. That I have a, um, even on my way to the island for a show. We have an event. Called um, All White Party, and the band was built to perform. I said that oh, she would like to come with her friend, and I said, No problem. She was, she came with her friend, then we had, we just sat down together. Um, there was also on that table was a, a friend of the band, Ajia Mohamed, who also happens to be somebody that I knew through the band over the years. So Ajia was there with one of his friends called Oyinda. We had drinks normal charts everything i was because i'm i'm the manager of the band and the band is meant to perform i had the responsibility of ensuring that it was well the sound was okay the whole environment was conducive for him to give out his optimum so i was going back and forth ensuring to make him this is the time you're performing this is the time you should come down so i was not fully like just seated somewhere i was going back and forth to his room because the band was at that event and it was lodged within the venue which is the co atlantic city so that was it okay um when the band eventually came to the event mm -hmm. when he was seated was it possible for him to have made any interaction at all with uh Shaitan or to have any seen her I I, I I i i wouldn't say it was possible i wouldn't say no or yes but the possibility is there because where we were seated were just like two tables around people were dancing when he was performing people were recording and everything so the possibility is there but it's not something i i would my focus on that day so i couldn't say that yes or no okay so what happened after the event okay when she was seated and everything she must have had um, interactions with also the people on that table she met oyinda and Oyinda's friend, which is Ajia Mohamed. The band was, on that day, he was just not happy with the sitting arrangement and everything. So, we had an altercation, like a, like a back and forth. I don't like my sitting position, I don't do this, I don't do that. We walked away. Ikechuku was present on that day also. Ikechuku dragged me to one side and told me that, Frank, you need to also be calm. Your artist is angry. Just make sure that he's calm so he can give out his best which I needed to and I ensured that I performed. After the performance, I went back to the table. Ajay had gone, Oinda had gone, Shaita had gone. Okay, good. I went to where the band was. I told him I was leaving. I went to where the client was and I told them I was leaving. And I left. 
by the time I left, I called Shaito. Where are you? He said, Oh, I'm in Ajia's room with Oinda. Fine. Okay, I'm coming towards Glee Hotel. But I'm going to I'm going to drop my key for you because you don't have a place to stay. Because she mentioned it along the line that it was late that she couldn't go to a better at two o'clock or thereabout. That she couldn't go to a better. And I said, no problem. I would drop my key for you, but I'm going home. Which I did. I got to Blue Hotel. I called her. She came downstairs. I was in the car. I gave her my key and I left. Upon on my way home, as I was driving, I was on Todd Milan I could remember precisely. After Dolphin, just entering Todd Milan Bridge, the band called me. Frank, where are you? I said, ah, I've left. Though. I'm on Todd Milan Bridge. Said, okay, no problem. And I said, I'll see you at the airport. Said, ah, no problem. And I left. I went home. Because I got home late, I, when I got in, I, I had to wake my wife up to tell her that I'm going to the airport. I have a flight for 7 a.m. to catch. Can you drop me at the airport? When I have any money flight like that, she normally drops me at the airport so she can take the car back. Oh, she dropped me at the airport, I'll say about 5 o'clock or after 5. I waited at the airport. Other colleagues came, Chicky Cheesy, the drummer, everybody came around. The band came to the airport, say about 6.30 or thereabout. We went into the airport. Upon entering the airport, the band asked me for cash to give to people at the airport. I told him that. Um, I don't have any cash because the ATM machines at the airport was not working. It just fled up. I can't even have cash. I can't even have cash. Those things happened. We went to Ghana. We bought the flight, went to Ghana, got to Ghana. Upon getting to Ghana, I just saw that my phone kept ringing and I looked at it, Shaitan. But we were in the bus. We were in the car to the um, apartment, so I didn't pick. When I got to the apartment, I put on the Wi-Fi. I got connected to the Wi-Fi and I saw his message. And I saw a message. Then I called her back. Why are you calling me now? This is the first question she asked me was that. Were you aware that the band was coming to my room? I said no. First of all, the band doesn't even know my room. Secondly, it's never lodged at Glee Hotel. So I don't know. That was when she made the allegation that the band came to my room this that 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 the band came to my room and forcefully had kind of knowledge of me she the voice notes are there she sent it via voice notes so i can even replay the voice note for you to hear when she said that i was disturbed i was like what's all this i called chicky cheesy see what i'm hearing and we spoke first of all let people not forget that the band's wife was also on that trip with us to ghana and we're all staying in an Airbnb apartment. So I couldn't broach the topic with him because of that fact. So I kept quiet. I, after speaking with Chikichi, I called Ajia Mohamed in Lagos. Now, bro, see what I'm hearing. What is the what is your own take on? He said, no, 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 frankly, don't bother yourself. That it has been resolved. That in fact, I even gave the girl a hundred dollars. So I called the um, Shaitan back and said, Madam, what's all this now? They said they give you a hundred dollars and why are you talking about rape and everything? She got angry. Mm -hmm. They sent other voice notes. Oh, oh, is it because they, they actually told me not to tell you because they think I'm your girlfriend. But I'm telling you just so that you know the kind of people you're working with. That really unsettled me. And I looked at it. Okay, good. And Chiki was there. If he comes out tomorrow to say he wasn't there, he's left for him and his conscience, but he was there. We had that conversation and that was it. Well, in that, um, Shaitan in that, in that same voice note said, I'm not trying to push any case or I'm not trying to cloud chase or go to the public or anything. I just want you to know the kind of people you're working with. And I said, noted. And that was the end of our conversation. So a couple of days later, we had the show we are supposed to have in Ghana. Then four days later, I just told them that, well, I've done what I came to do in Ghana. I need to go because it was just the beginning of the year. My family were at home. I needed to go and spend time with my family and everything. So I left. I left alone. They were still in Ghana because they had a video shoot 
with two faces to shoot and everything. So I left, I got to Lagos, I sat down, I assessed every other thing and I told myself that frankly maybe this is the time for you to start your own journey yourself. I broke the topic with a couple of people. I reached out to the industry to say, is it the right time, this, that, that. And they said, why? You know, people are doing this thing even with less experience and less exposure and less contact that you have. You can do it. You are not just... And I said, okay, good. Well, then I sent an email to the band saying, I just want to inform the business that I am resigning for reasons best known to... No, I'm resigning for... to ch go... I'm going to go and pursue my own dreams and for other reasons that I just feel I cannot put into writing. And they replied me say, oh, if this is the decision you are going to take, no problem. Um, you know what to do, go, get to the HR, do the resolution, whatever is with you that is company property, you can return it and everything. And I called the HR. There are only two things with me, which is the chain and the business ID card. I sent it back to them, and that was it. Now, before we move forward to what has recently happened, there are certain questions I want to ask you based on what you just told us. Now, um, back to Bully Hotel. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, in the statement they put out, mm -hmm. they said it's not possible for them to have given the key to someone who did the, the extra key to trust anybody. Now, the room you were staying with in, who booked the room? Was it you or the branch? No, it was company. I, I booked the room on behalf of the company. On behalf of the company? Yeah, because I was, I was on the job. So I was entitled to a room. Okay. Alright, so that settles that. So you're saying it's possible that if the branch had gone to the reception, I'm not saying he did, but I'm saying it's possible that if the branch had gone to the front desk and asked for an extra key card for a particular room, the possibility is not something I can discuss. First of all, I don't work for the hotel. And I can tell you categorically that I was given just one key. And I gave that key to Shintan. That's it. The second question I want to ask is uh, you've told us what Shintan told you. Yeah. But you didn't tell us what you told her, how you responded to her at that point when she sent voice notes. I was shocked. I was shocked. And I told her. No, I told her what I already mentioned what I said by saying after speaking with Ajia, I got back to her and said, But you collected the hundred dollar, why are you talking about rape? Then she also called back to say, They told me not to tell you, but I'm telling you so that you can know that this thing happened. It is left for you and your God to know. I've left everything to God and I've moved on. And I said, Fine. Because basically, if someone calls you and says, I've left them to God. I'm not bigger than God now, so that was it. I just moved on. I didn't see any reason to push the issue beyond what she has said, and that was it. Okay, and um, before you resigned, before you sent your the email, before you left Ghana, mm -hmm. you had no discussion with the bank no, about the We did not have the discussion. One, for the reason that the wife was within years, we stayed in the same apartment, at least we stayed in the same apartment for two days, three days. Then, this, this was somebody that was just recovering from the loss of his child. Bringing up such an issue is so insensitive and it builds me as a manager to distract my artist with such an allegation, especially when the person alleging has said, I am not going to go public, I am not ready to go public, I don't need to go public, I just want to let sleeping dogs lie. I didn't see the reason why I should upset the I take it upon myself to champion such a cause on my head, so that was right. So, um, this year, June, early June, we saw, of course, uh, first a particular, I think a, a talent manager of sorts, spoke out, he said some things, and then the day after, she told also got what he had said. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm sure you'd have seen that yeah, I saw it. on blogs. I saw it like everybody else, yeah. In fact, I, the, my attention was called to it by Jimmy and Chikuchizi. I, I didn't even see it on time. I was sleeping. I, I am always somebody that I work mostly at night in terms of all my creative writings and everything. So I sleep quite early. I'm a work from home dad based on the kind of business I do. And secondly, there was COVID. Everybody was stuck at home. So 
when Jimmy called my attention to it, I looked at it and said, wow, what's all this? Okay, let me wait to hear the continuity of this. Next day, same day, she either buzzed me with a different number. Like, how can the band say, say no to rape? You better drop that. I'm like, who is this? Is this Shaitan? He said, yes. How can the band say that? This? I'm like, first of all, I don't work with the band anymore. Secondly, you told me a version of your truth. I also heard a separate version from somebody that was there. I also heard that there was $100 involved in the whole thing and everything. So, I just looked at all of you that probably all of you are just telling me different versions. And it's not on me to pick it up my head. So, I've left all of you to your wisdom to undo yourself. And that has been my stance till now. Okay, but personally, when you saw the stories on there mm. and your name was being mentioned, how did you feel? I felt very bad, first of all, to put my name online just like that. It's very, very traumatic. I've had a very good, very good name in terms of my working integrity in the business. In terms of my working integrity in the business, so I'm, I I was very very shocked, and the person was saying it with so much um, authority to say that Franklin is still alive, except they have paid Franklin two hundred million. I was like, who is this? I'm, first of all, I've never met the guy. I don't even know who he is. So I was very angry. So when she told me that to me, it was with the same anger that I was replying and that, are you okay? You put my name online and you are telling me to. Are you telling me to try and corroborate your story? You told me a version of your story. And I heard a separate version from somebody that was also in the hotel. So why are you telling me to corroborate your story? She was very bitter. She sent a lot of nasty messages. I don't like, just let me be. Don't contact me on this issue. Whatever you want to do, whatever truth you believe in, whatever you experience that you want to share, go ahead. But just know that I did not witness anything physically i was not there i cannot tell you that i saw the band at the hotel i cannot tell you i did not see the band at the hotel i cannot tell you the band came into your room i cannot there are so many i cannot in the story because i was not there physically that's it before before this issue what was your i know you had ended you stopped working with the band mm -hmm. in 2018 but prior to this issue in june june this year what was your relationship with the band? We had a good relationship. In fact, if I can remember correctly, the band calls me to say, okay, this is the plan. For example, when they wanted to continue that American tour, they had a couple of snags based on the fact that we cancelled because he lost his son. So there are some promoters that still... There's a guy in New York called Azubike. They called me to say, can I step in and iron out this issue? And I called as okay, put it on three we we had a conversation, we tried to resolve it, and we resolved it, and the show went on. So we were talking very well. There were inquiries for shows from Dubai, there was an inquiry from Nigerian Buis. I would talk to the people, I would forward the messages to the band, say, Oh, these people are asking for your availability and this. The media people that called me to say they want to interview the band, I'll send it to him. If he wants he will tell me, go ahead, if he doesn't want. So, I had a very, very good relationship with the band. Few days to when this whole story broke, the band, I sent the band a, an artwork from somebody and just some a random person that messaged me and said, ah, I did this artwork based on the band's new song that he wants to drop. And when I saw it, fantastic artwork, I sent it to him and he called me back like almost midnight. Frank, Ah, this is lovely. I, the chat on my phone. This is lovely. I like it. Who is this guy? I said, it's a random guy. I can forward the information to you so that you guys can take it up from here. I mourn the information. I sent it to him. Then he mentioned, ah, I hope you haven't forgotten that I'm going to be 40 next week. I'm like, oh, welcome to the big 40. What's the plan? Yeah, and he told me, based on social distance and everything, he's trying to have a um, 40 songs by the band and everything. I said, fantastic. I was going to use the J.O.B. Then I mentioned that the J.O.B. had a good synergy with Jimmy. Why not use the J.O.B. and Jimmy and everything? So we spoke. Come, then I also told him that, oh, Global City has been trying to recruit a couple of people for this year campaign. Have they read out to you? He said, no. I said, well, 
they read that to me to get Tiba Savage, Jeremy Alade, and um, I can't remember the third person. But I think they've zoned in on Jeremy Alade. This is the presentation they sent for Jeremy Alade. You can look at it, call your contact, and let them involve you. It's something that I believe that you've always been working with them for so long. So I don't see any reason why they cannot involve you. You know, those that the same advice that I would give him when I was working with him. So we had a very fantastic relationship. Okay. So I have to take you back. Uh, it, it made mention of other version of the story mm -hmm. more than twice now. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us what that other version of the story The other version was simple. Ajia Mohamed, he, he told me straight up that this issue has been resolved. Frankly, you don't need to bother yourself. I gave her a hundred dollar. Simple now. Yeah, which nobody mentioned. Which she didn't mention to me when she brought up the issue. So when I, I told her this, she now told me that this is the reason why they gave me the other that to go and buy drugs and everything. I said, well, like you can see, I don't know anything about this thing. I was not there. I don't want to be involved. Okay. After that particular instance mm -hmm. on the third and fourth, we saw lots of letters from lawyers flying around on social media. I saw it also. Yes. And uh, how did those ones make you feel at first? Basically, if you look at all the letters flying around, you will never find my name on any of the bandits' letter. None. Till date. None. And I have an issue where people just make up, mention your name with, without calling you, nobody's inquiring anything from you. You just wake up one morning and you see your name. I mean, it's very unsettling, trust me. Do you know I mean? The amount of calls I've received globally to say what happened a lot of people just want to hear the gist a lot of people want me to corroborate and i kept telling everybody that the honest truth and my only truth is that i was not there i was not there i did not physically see anything so like i all like i always said as far as i'm concerned you know happened because i was not there so days after I think on the 16th or 17th of June 2020, mm -hmm. there were reports that Shayton had allegedly been arrested by the police. And there were also reports that you had also been arrested. I was not arrested. Let me put it up on the record today. I was not arrested. I was invited and I had gone there. I made my statement. They said I should come the Monday after. I went there again. I didn't see neither Shayton nor the defense team. I went there again on Wednesday, nobody turned up. So I told them that that was the last time I was going to come. Because there are even certain reports recently that you are detained by the police. Oh, that was, the first invitation was from the IGPRT team from our show depot in Ikeja Jerry. Then a week later, I got a, a message from somebody from the FCID Abuja team, um, Supol Lazarus, or the Abaya, Lazarus Kali. He sent me a message that, um, based on the allegation between Shaito and the band, that I, it's imperative that I come in to make my statement, which I obliged him. I went to uh, Milvati, SFU. I met him, we sat down, I made my statement to the best of my knowledge, what I can um, cognitively re um, remember, recall. Because this, if you look at this incident, it happened in 2018. A lot of issues have gone. I I cannot be recalling everything on that day, but I made my statement. He cross examined those statements and he told me that he was going to call me back if there was need for any clarification, which he did. He called me back. I wasn't feeling too good to drive. There was traffic, there was them I had malaria, I had um, migraine. So I told him that I couldn't make it. Then, a couple of days ago, I told him that where can we meet that is convenient for him. We went to, we met at um, ARF in the Kedja Jari. I went there, I did my statement. He put the call through to the Abuja office. And ACP Uche came online, did the entire interrogation on phone again. I made my statement there with my lawyer present. And he said I can go. That if there is any need for me to come to Abuja, that they will invite me. And I told them that there's no problem. Um, if phone call away, they can call me anytime. 
Okay, so the reports by um, Osobi that you have been detained by police in the FCIID unit in Kogi. Mm -hmm. That was on the 29th of July. Are you saying that that never happened? June. Of June. Of June, sorry. I was there from, say, 12 to 7.30 and nobody could reach me. So if anybody had assumed I was detained, if there's a possibility of that because nobody could reach me. Why couldn't anybody reach you? Because I, you can't take your phone into the interrogation place, so nobody could reach me. So you were interrogated for seven hours? Yeah, seven hours plus. What exactly were they? It was just all types of questions. They played um, five voice um, voice recorded messages to me. The first one was between Kemi Olu Lawyer and Devanj. The second one was between Damian and Shaito's mother. The third one was my conversation, a three-way conversation between Ajia, myself and Debanj. And that's the only time. That was the first time I, I and Debanj ever spoke after this allegation. Ajia put the call through to me. He was asking me that, um, was I there when... I said, no, I didn't see anything. You know what happened, as far as I'm concerned, because what I was not there, I cannot see. Then the band came online, Frank, well, what can we do? And I said, good. If you want me to reach out to this girl, it's a different thing. That's not a problem for me. But it's not as if I go and reach out to the girl and you, are, you now throw me under the bus. And he said, no, it will never happen. Frank, you know, I cannot throw me under the bus. And I said, okay, no problem. I'll do my utmost best to reach out to the girl. I reached out to the girl. She wasn't responding. I get, got back to them and she's not responding. At that point, that was the only time we discussed with Yeah, that was the that was the third conversation. The fourth conversation was between Damien and myself when he called me to come out to say to discredit Shaitan. And I'm like, I can't do that. I'm like, what are you telling me to do? At my age, I should go and discredit somebody that the lawyer, uh, there are already lawyers flying about the petition the IG. You are telling me to discredit that person. Damien Okura for his um the current uh, the branch manager. I said, I can't do that. And he said, forget about the IG. What are you talking about? We can't. We'll, we'll resolve everything. I'll call the branch. I said, call the branch. Do anything. But the truth is that I cannot discredit this girl. Because that would bring me lying. The fifth conversation was between Jimmy and myself. Jimmy called me. Oh, Frank, what's up? Um, can we talk? I said, I'm ah, fine. It was a video call and we, we started talking. The band came on the, on the line. I didn't even know they were in the same place. He came on the line. Franklin, what do you mean by you cannot condone such? I said, what do you mean by can I said, first of all, if I make a statement like that, go and check what conversation ensued before that statement happened. Then you can read the whole thing in context. Don't just take a line out of his conversation and, and that's what you want to fight me with. Like, no, I should go out to it and clarify. I'm like, no, you can't tell me to do that. Now, you can't tell me to do that, to just go and clarify a statement that was taken out of context. I cannot condone such could mean one million things at the same time. But don't forget that as at the point of that, um, of the all-white party that you got angry and was, I told you that this is not my style. And I've always told you that if you have any issue, you can discuss with me, no just make it public. So I can't condone so it does not mean anything if it's taken out of context. So you said the first um, voice notes that you listened to was between the branch and Kemi Lunar. Yes. Can you tell us the content and what was discussed in the, the conversation wasn't long, but obviously it, it was a it was a call made by Kemi Lunar to the branch. Yes, they spoke in Yoruba. Yeah, he said that. Um, frankly, yeah, no, she started with, um, do you know that um, there's a guy that tweets for Donald Trump? The guy tweets all the minds of Donald Trump. Donald Trump does not need to say anything. The guy says it and whatever I say is then Donald Trump's um, mind, you know, trying to build a background. Now, Franklin was the one that set this whole thing up. Franklin was the one that got a lawyer for Shaito. Franklin was the one that read out to Sega Link to say, and I'm like, 
where is all this coming from? I've not spoken to Shaito physically, on voice or anything. I don't even have a lawyer at that point in time. I just had a friend that had legal knowledge that was escorting me to all the invitations from police. So how could I have been the one to get a lawyer for Shaito? Franklin is the one that's doing it. You know, she was, and the band was just saying, mm, okay, mm. and they caught the court. They didn't let the court play to the end. Uh, did you see her? Because before before the band's uh, response went viral online, I think the day before, there was a video of Kimberly Miller where she called the cops. Did you see that? Did you see it? We saw it. Yeah, everybody saw it. People sent it to me. People sent it to me, but you see, for someone like Kimberly Miller, I would not. I would not dignify with the response. When I saw that calling out and everything, I was very disturbed because apart from anything, it was an outright accusation of something that was fabricated. So I called my lawyer friend and told him, I see what I'm going through. And he said, no, don't respond to her. Institute the case, write a petition, let them call out to order, which I've done, which I'm doing. I've done. I've gone to the police station. I've made my own statement. My lawyers petitioned them, and they are working on it. And I'm sure in a couple of days from now, the, the world will know how far I've gone on that. Because I take that very, very seriously. When you stand up and you have never put a call to me before to say you want to hear my own side, and you could confidently come and say that I, I was blackmailing the band. I, was, I mean, where was that coming from? That I'm a pimp. I'm this. I arrange girls. I'm like. Who is feeding this kind of information to the lady? I kept quiet and my lawyer said, just go the legal way, don't go out of the law and address it. Then after that, she also tweeted something that said the band gave my wife millions to do IVF. I feel very odd that regardless of whatever is happening, I would never bring people's family into this, this report. I would never. So when I saw that, it was a low blow. My wife was very angry. We did our IVF and we had challenges of conception. But thank God, we have two kids. It was something that I never had the conversation with somebody about. The only reason why the band knew and Damien knew was because of the fact that we were supposed to travel. And I told that, them that I'm not, I, was, I wasn't able to make, I won't be able to make this trip because my wife had some issues about pregnancy and everything. I, I confided in them. So to see it on Kemi Oluloyo's page, it just already connects that somebody is feeding this lady some false information to defame me. And that is why I take it upon myself to first address that Kemi issue. The band has not called me out in one statement, tweet, post, petition or anything. So I do not see any the local standing for me to start accusing the band or responding to the band? No, he has not. So Kemi has done that. I'll address Kemi issue legally, and that's it. What I have about the band, that boy Abadjo, suggests that he never raped that woman. I'm looking at these names. I don't see faces. Auntie Shaita might be a woman. I think is the alleged victim, and Benjamin Essay. Um, is it S.A. Benjamin? I don't know whether it's a man or a woman, but these two people, okay, have concocted some kind of elaborate um, scheme, you know, to finish the badge. They really set him up. That's all it is. Okay, um, now, it seems as if you've been dragged into this issue a lot now, and you're like the middle, the man in the middle of everything. It's very unsettling. Do you know I've gone to police station much more than the accused and the accuser? How does that make you feel? There's no formal petition against me. Nobody has petitioned me to say I'm complicit for this. I'm nobody. Everything is just flying on social media because it's paid for. It's sponsored. These are proxies trying to push an agenda. And I won't listen to proxy. I will just go and work within the ambit of the law and address those issues. The, the only thing I'm not going to say is that I would continue keeping mute because I would not want to stray out of 
the, the, um, the, my legal advice not to go and make an error of being emotionally charged and say things. But the only thing that I can say to everybody that the truth that I know, I have written it down in my statement. If anybody wants to find out, they are free to call the police and make inquiries because there are so many pseudo investigative journalists everywhere on social media these days. They can call the police. And if you put the call through to me, like you, like when you did, I told you that I don't talk to journalists. It's not my thing. I've spent 20 years in this business. I cannot be quoted anywhere. I'd rather just let my work do the talking. I am not somebody that would want to be dragged back and forth and that's it. I just keep calm. It's unsettling, it's disturbing. It's affecting me emotionally, psychologically. My family is disturbed. You just imagine your wife saying such a thing about her. You know how she'll feel. So um, if I tell you that, no, I'm okay. No, I'm not. I've been harassed. I've been. I've, I've had calls. I've had threats. People have gone to my page to say a lot of things. Snitch. That. 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 It's unsettling. But I'm just trying to keep calm because I have a cluster of people that I get advice from that tell me that no, don't rush and make a mistake. If you did not physically witness this thing, you cannot attest to something you did not see. And that is my stand. And that's my position. And that's why I've kept quiet. That's it. Okay, uh, one final question. You said when she called you in 2018 to mm -hmm. tell you that uh, the badge had had forced canal knowledge of her, mm -hmm. you said you were shocked. Were you shocked because it was Shaitan or you were shocked that she was saying the badge had done something like that? How would I put it? This is somebody I've worked with for three years. Something like that has never come up. At, at all. I've traveled with the band almost everywhere in the world. Something like that has never come up. So if it comes up for the first time, I will be shocked. Regardless of who was involved, I will be shocked. Sorry about this whole it's sad. it's not easy. It's sad, but I mean it's really sad. I I I would not in my wildest imagination, I would never have believed I would be in this kind of position. Never. So, for some reason, don't be. Almost two years after you stopped working. I left like 18 months ago now. January 2019. January 2019. It's not very funny, but I just hope that at the end of the day, the world knows the truth, the world sees the truth, and the, and the truth comes out and everybody's fine. I wish both of them the best. I just don't want to be dragged into it. For more of this GC Entertainment news, please log on to our website www.broadwaytv.tv and on Instagram at the Broadway TV. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Broadway Africa.